Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you guys stopping by. On today's video, we're gonna be learning how to make muscadine wine. I wanted to take the opportunity to make a real quick video and show you guys how we make wine here on, on our farm from grapes that we grow in our vineyard. It's really, really easy and every single thing that I use to make our wine, you can pick up on Amazon. So if you have any questions about where we get our stuff and the prices and all that, uh, just check out Amazon. I'm gonna try to keep this video really, really simple and really, um, really, really basic. It's really easy to make wine. So if you guys just follow along, you too could be making your own wine at home. Well, we're gonna be making a three gallon batch uh, which will look like this. Okay, in order to make a three gallon batch, we'll need two uh, two gallon buckets. And like I said again, you get these on Amazon. They come with the lids and they also come with the airlocks. If they don't come with the airlocks, just order some airlocks too. They're a couple of bucks, uh, but you really need these. Next, you're gonna need some sterilizer because you're gonna wanna sterilize everything that touches your wine, uh, whether it be the spoon, the filters, uh, to scrape your grapes out, the buckets, anything that touches my wine, I make sure I sterilize it first. We use this product called Star Sand. Uh, of course, you get it on Amazon and it lasts forever. You, you, it doesn't take but a little drop to make a lot. First thing I do is sterilize my bucket real well. And I just let that sit for a minute. It doesn't affect the flavor or the taste of your wine. Uh, and after leaving it sitting for a minute or two, I rinse it out real good with some cold water. Next, you're gonna need some grapes or whatever type of fruit you wanna use. Uh, we've made uh, a lot of different wines here lately out of pineapple, uh, scuppernose. This spring and summer, we're gonna make some plums, some peach. Uh, you can do this with a lot of different fruits, but our favorite, seeing how we're muscadine growers, are muscadine grapes. This, this is the Isens variety of grapes. It's one of our absolute favorites. It's a real super strong, uh, sweet, really, really sweet grape. Just fantastic. But what we do is we put them in one gallon bags. That way they're pre-measured uh, because we're going to put one gallon of grapes and just top it off with water. All right, for step one, that's basically it. You need a couple of two gallon buckets uh, with the lids and the airlocks. You need a gallon of grapes per bucket and that'll fill your bucket half full. You fill it, you fill it with water right to the top of the grapes and we're gonna let them thaw out until tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll do the crushing. Um, something just popped in my head. We're on a well, we use well water. If you're on a city or county that has a, a water that has a lot of chemicals in it, I wouldn't recommend using that. I would try to go to the store and buy some purified water, or some kind of spring water, something like that. Uh, I think that would be better for your wine. But stick around, we'll start crushing some grapes. Well, it's been 24 hours, our grapes should be thawed out. We're gonna take uh, just a regular old potato smasher and smash our grapes. Uh, we will make sure we sanitize first. Always sanitize everything. How about that nice purple color already coming out? Isn't that pretty? Next, we're gonna need what's called a Camden tablet. Uh, the Camden tablets, what it will do is help kill off any of the wild yeast that was left on the grapes uh, because we didn't wash them or anything. We just picked them, bagged them, and put them in the freezer. But this will help kill off any wild yeast and get it ready for tomorrow when we add the sugar water, the yeast, and some other stuff. 
but you'll need some Camden tablets. Uh, like I say, everything I'm showing you guys will be on Amazon. Real cheap. It's actually just a little white tablet. I take two spoons and just squish them together. They break up really, really easy. And then just sort of spread them around. Give them just a little stir. Okay, well you will need the Camden tablets uh, at the beginning and at the end of our wine making. Uh, like I say, it helps kill yeast or any uh, kind of bacteria, anything that you don't want in your wine. Uh, so you have to get some Camden tablets. Now the airlocks, if you're curious about having the airlocks on right now, basically the airlocks are just to keep anything from getting inside our wine, like gnats or little flies or any or anything <laughs> that you don't want in your wine. It just sort of covers that hole up. Uh, you really don't need it right now, but you really need to cover your hole up. You don't want anything getting in your wine because we're going to have it sitting uh, for another 24 hours. And then tomorrow at this time, we'll add our sugar water and our yeast. I think you'll get a kick out of that. This is night number three. To me, this is where it starts to get fun because we start adding our yeast and all the chemicals and things we need to make a really nice wine. Our grapes have been sitting in a bucket for 24 hours with a Camden tablet, letting it kill off all the wild yeast and things we don't want growing in our wine. Uh, but the, the chemicals we're going to need for tonight will be uh, an acid blend. It's called acid blend. We'll also need a pectic enzyme. This helps break down your fruit and pull them sugars and stuff out of, out of your fruit. Uh, and a yeast nutrient to help feed our yeast. These are basically the three chemicals that I use, and I'll only use them one time, right at the beginning of the fermenting process. Next, we're gonna need our yeast, and you can get all this, all this stuff on Amazon, as I said before. Uh, this yeast is an EC1118. Our pectic enzyme, we're gonna use a half a teaspoon. Our acid blend, we'll use a full teaspoon. And two teaspoons of yeast nutrient. Stir that in a little. Okay, next we're gonna be making our sugar syrup that will top off our buckets. Uh, we're gonna need two quarts of water and four pounds of sugar per bucket. And I do it the easy way. You don't have to heat up any water on the stove. I like my stuff to be kind of lukewarm uh, because I don't want my water to be ice cold. I don't want it to be too hot. I'm always very paranoid about uh, wiping out my yeast. So I just try to keep everything nice and, and, and warm. We'll just keep this moving around until it starts to dilute and break down really, really well. Okay, while this starts to break down, we're gonna get our yeast started. This is one of my absolute favorite things to do, and what better way to do it than in a nice wine glass. Then we'll add about a tablespoon of sugar and get it diluted. We're just going to add about half a pack of yeast to each. We'll end up using the whole pack, but just half for each container. We won't stir it, we'll just let it sit.
All right, I just love watching that yeast explode and start to work. <laughs> it's really fascinating. The yeast is looking good. It sinks all the way to the bottom, and in about two or three minutes, it just all of a sudden explodes. It's really cool. I gotta get a kick out of that. Okay, now we'll add our sugar water to each container. All right, next we add our yeast. And we just pour it all around. Just have a little fun. I take a little water. And we just sort of stir that in. And everything's been sterilized and I don't mind mixing my spoon with each batch because eventually this is all going in the same carboy. All right, well that's it. Your chemicals, your sugar water, uh, and your yeast. Super simple. Uh, you don't want to bring that, you don't want to add additional water to bring that level up to the top for the fact um, when that yeast starts working, it's going to push that fruit up and cause what we call a cap that we'll want to break every day, but it, it'll eventually push that fruit up and it'll clog up our airlocks and we don't want that. Uh, so you want to leave a little head space in there, about an inch of head space inside and I'll show you on the next clip what I'm talking about how it pushes that fruit up uh, because we'll have to go in here every day starting to starting this time tomorrow and break that cap up and give it a good stir until that yeast stops working off but stick around I'll show you uh, all about that next okay it's been three days since we put our yeast in and every day I've opened up the lid and stirred our wine up, broke that cap loose and stirred our wine. Uh, that's what you should do every day. I thought I would show you guys uh, what, the, what it looks like when that fruit comes up at the top. I'll show you the foam where the yeast is working. Uh, and I thought you guys would get a kick out of seeing the airlocks work. That's what you want to see. You want to see your uh, bubblers bubbling. That lets you know that carbon dioxide is being released. Uh, the yeast is working and producing alcohol. So we're going to take the lids off these things and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. See how all that fruit's been breaking down. Uh, it's just looking great. There's a close up and you can kind of see the foam in there, that's the little bubbles that are working, that is that yeast, and you'll really see it when I stir it. And you see that cap just needs to be pushed around, pushed back down. All that foam is that yeast working for you. It smells absolutely fantastic. That's my, one of my favorite parts is breaking that lid and that nice aroma that comes out of there. It's just beautiful. I give it a little stir from the bottom. Just get everything moving around. And look at that color. That color's crazy cool. That's number one. Let's see what number two looks like. Okay, as you can see, the bubblers are working. Uh, and we will stir this every single night. We will not skip a night. We'll stir this every single night until you get to where you see these, where they're just, you'll see in a, in a couple of weeks, they'll slow down. 
But once it completely stops, uh, you watch it for a few minutes and you don't see a bubble whatsoever. Or when you stir it and you're not seeing any more foam, it's time to take it out of the buckets and put it in our glass carboy. So stick around. We're going to stir these for the next couple of weeks and I'll show you what we do after this yeast dies off. Well, it's been a couple of weeks. These guys have settled way down. Uh, they're hardly bubbling at all. I know there's still some, uh, still some fermenting going on in there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, pump both of these buckets into a three gallon carboy, uh, put an airlock on it and just let it sit for a couple more weeks and let, make sure all that fermenting is over with and we'll let the sediment settle down to the bottom. Uh, but first we got to scrape out all the grapes and all the stuff at the, that settles to the bottom of these buckets before we do that and clean it up a little bit. Okay, we're just going to siphon this into the three gallon carboy. Really, really simple. Now that we have it in the three gallon carboy, we'll let this sit for a couple weeks. It'll settle out. Uh, we'll let all that sediment settle to the bottom. We'll re-rack it into some buckets. This will be in a week or so. Uh, and we're trying to work on getting that clarity that we want. We want it really crystal clear to be really, really pretty. Uh, and way, the way we do that is we'll just leave it in here. We're going to put it in the back of this closet for a week or two. Uh, you could leave it for as long as you want. But uh, we usually just keep our eye on it. Make sure we don't see a lot of bubbles around the edge or any activity in our airlock to make sure it's, it's done fermenting for one thing. And, uh, and we'll work on that clarity at the same time. But uh, stick around. We're going to put this thing in the closet. Next clip, I'll show you how we rack it and try to work on getting this uh, wine a little more clear. All right, what we're going to do next is we're going to take and try to get all the sediment that's uh, settled to the bottom of our carboy out, uh, which is called racking. We're going to take it out of here, rack it into these buckets. And then once we dump this sediment out, we'll put it back in the carboy. Put an airlock back on it, let it settle one more time, and it'll be ready for bottling. It's really, really simple. And as you can see, nothing has happened. The yeast has all died off. Everything is settled. Uh, we have our muscadine. We also have another one we've been doing on the side. This is our pineapple wine. I'll show you guys it just because we're doing it at the same time. But both of them have settled out, and they just look great. You can see the difference uh, from when they were fermenting. All right, we racked off all our wine down into our buckets. Um, this is the part that gets everybody and me. It's really hard to make yourself throw that away, <laughs> but we don't have a filtration. They, they make these wine filters that you can buy on Amazon. Uh, they're 150 bucks. This to me is just the easiest way to do it. Just to dump that and rack it right back into the carboy and let it settle one more time and you will have a crystal clear wine. And by the time you back sweeten it, it fills it right back up. So you just, you're filling that space up with your sugar water when you back sweeten. But uh, it's really tough and I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments about dumping that down. It really drives me nuts too, but I don't have a filtration system. Uh, <laughs> if you guys wanna buy me one, hey, rock on. This, <laughs> my wife's over there laughing. But this is the cheap way to do it. I show, I told you guys this is the way we do it, and it works great every time. So bite the bullet, dump this, and just <laughs> start new. <laughs> All right, as you can see, all the sediment's gone. 
there will be very little sediment left in this when we're done. That that really racked really nice. I mean, it's just crystal clear. Just beautiful. And we add our airlock back to it. And like I say, by the time we start sweetening it, we won't back sweeten it that much, but there'll be a lot, enough back sweeten uh, to fill to go back to your three gallons. It'll really turn out nice. That is really turning out pretty. And the alcohol is really strong. We can smell it all over. It's really, really strong. So, uh, hey, looking great. And what's nice is you can actually get a little sample of what you're making. Get those little bubbles out of there. If you look already clear as a bell just looks great smells fantastic i could just sit there and smell it all day it smells just like muscadines <laughs> i just love it it's really really good it's a little dry it's a little dry so for you guys that like a dry wine don't add anything to it. Uh, we'll rack it, like I say, one more time and then we'll bottle it. It's almost ready. But I mean, look at that. Oh, it's just, it's just beautiful, beautiful. It's strong, it's really good. All right, it's been a couple of weeks since we separated our wine from our sediment. We're gonna do it one more time. We've let this settle. Uh, we should have just a little teeny weeny bit at the bottom, uh, but we got our sugar water waiting to back sweeten and we're ready to bottle. So stick around. We're going to take and siphon this out into some buckets um, and then get our bottles out. And we've sanitized everything. We sanitized our bottles. Uh, anything that I say again, anything that touches that wine, you make sure you sanitize um, because we don't want to mess our wine up. But we're ready to take this, put it in our buckets, and put it in some bottles and get ready to sample some. And I just want to show you guys real quick. We had a sediment to about right here the last time. And I mean, you really, I'm just trying to get a better view, but you really don't even see anything. But it just looks so crystal clear. It just turns out really, really nice. Okay, what we did uh, with our sugar water is we just made it one to one. One quart uh, warm water, one quart of sugar. And uh, that makes a nice sugar syrup to back sweeten. And uh, I just basically use a measuring cup. We do one cup and we've made it enough to where we already have our preference. We start off with two cups per batch. That was nice. <laughs> we basically start off with two cups per batch and then we'll go from there. And I didn't video this, but the remainder that was the, the last bit that was in that three gallon carboy, we poured it into another glass and really looked at it. Cause I hate, I told you guys, I hate throwing anything away as far as especially our wine, but there was zero sediment. There was a very, very small amount of sediment. I just put it right back in my wine. It's just gonna be for me and my wife to consume. And you see how clear that looks? It just turned out beautiful. My camera girl, <laughs> trying to make me laugh. Smells great. Dang, that is good. That is right where I want it. I'm watching my wife behind the camera and it's never sweet enough for her. So when you're sweetening your wine, it's a taste preference. That's the fun part 
<laughs> is you sit back and you just add a little, add a little, and find that sweet spot that you like. But I will add a little more because I know my wife wants it sweeter. I'm gonna add one more cup to each batch. And that ought to be just right. I just love it. Well, that's where it's staying, right there. <laughs> <laughs> But you back sweeten it to whatever you guys prefer. Let's put this in a bottle. I'm ready to bottle it up. That first siphon was a lot bigger. I can't remember the sizes, uh, but they're on Amazon. Everything's on Amazon. It's just a bigger one that fits inside of a three gallon carboy. Uh, this little mini pump is perfect for these buckets and it comes with a, uh, if it doesn't come with one, make sure you order a bottle filler. It has a little plunger right there that when you siphon the, the liquid in, the wine in here, you'll push that plunger and it'll fill our jars. gave us 13 and three, almost 14 full bottles. But we're gonna cork this one. This will be the one we sort of sip on through the week. We need to cork all these. Uh, we bought a corking tool. This thing is awesome. I love it. It's gonna be on Amazon. My wife just said she's gonna put all the links to this stuff in the description at the bottom of the video. Uh, so you guys can find all these tools and things we use on Amazon. This thing is a must have. And the corks we use, we sanitize our corks too. We put them all in a bowl, spray them down and uh, with the same sanitizer. These are a number eight cork. Uh, you'll see a number eight and number nine. These go in there absolutely perfect. Let me show you. Nice cork bottle. All right, there they are. They look great. Stick around, we're almost at the end of the video. We're gonna let these sit for 24 hours before uh, we finally put them up. Uh, but tomorrow night, we'll put our little decorative caps on each one of our bottles to sort of pretty them up a little bit. We get these on Amazon as well. You can get all the colors of the rainbow. There's just so many different colors you can choose from. Uh, but stick around, we got 24 more hours and we're done. All right, well the last step is to put our little shrink wrap cap on. You don't have to do this. We're gonna put a label on here as well. You don't have to do that. Um, <laughs> I just do because it looks good. Uh, you can bottle it just the way it is. It's ready to go. I mean, it's, it's ready. Uh, but you can buy these shrink wrap caps in tons of different colors. I, I, I mix and match a bunch of them. I bought a ton of these things. And uh, I meant to say too, is you can, really venture off into different colored bottles too because there's a lot of different colored bottles green blue clear uh the frosted and i've been buying a bunch of different bottles too because it can be it can be a lot of fun uh mixing things up like that but anyway we're gonna i'm gonna show you guys how we shrink wrap our little caps to our wine bottles first step is i'm going to get some water boiling and once it comes to a boil i'll cut it off and let that water calm down so we're able to stick our bottles in the water. A lot of people use hair dryers. They make another little thing that sits down on here and dries. It's just extra money. Uh, this works fantastic and it only takes two seconds. It really works. Y'all really gonna be blown away how easy this is. All right, we're boiling. We're just gonna cut it off and set this to the side. Let that calm down. All right, all we do is we put our finger right at the edge so we don't stick it in the water. And we'll, we'll submerge about that much of it and then it'll shrink wrap here and you need to just sink the rest.
How about that? Nice. Well, that's what they look like when they're done. They just look fantastic. I love that extra little character it gives your wine bottle. I love those. All right, next we'll put our labels on. Uh, that's optional as well, like I said. You can print your own labels out. Uh, that's what we did. Uh, actually, we were gifted some labels from some friends of ours, so we're gonna put those on and they'll look really, really nice. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for checking out my video. I know this was a long one, uh, but I wanted to get this one out. We've really gotten addicted to making our own muscadine wine. I just want to show you guys that you can do it too. If I can do it, anybody can do it. It's super easy. And this video should help you from grapes to bottle. Shouldn't be no problem if you'll follow this video step by step. We're making some fantastic wine. Thanks again, guys. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, share, and comment. Really appreciate it. Love you guys, Death, and we'll see you on the next video.